Hey folks, welcome to the Gardener's Workshop live from the farm. It's your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler and um, it is just a beautiful day to be out here and sharing all this with you guys. So if we've never met before, welcome here. Um, Thegardenersworkshop.com is our website where we are basically an online garden shop and we have a deep learning center, um, both free resources as well as paid resources. Um, you'll find over there my blogs, my podcasts, um, lots of great how-to videos. And so we have a lot, our real goal is to just kind of help you wherever you are, meet you where you are and help you get over the bump. Um, and you'll find on our online garden shop, all the tools, seeds, and supplies that I use here on our farm. We don't really offer a vast selection of different things. We just offer those things that I use. You'll find that we don't offer a whole bunch of different tools because I don't really use a whole bunch of different tools, right? So we help people kind of narrow it down. And so the theme um, that's emerged these past couple of weeks is row covers. And I've been talking about them a lot um, on my different lives um, because I'm getting a lot of questions about it. That's kind of how this goes, right? Those things that I'm getting lots of questions about are what I really try to talk about. And so yesterday on my clubhouse chat, I talked about um, row covers and I promised that today I would talk again about them as well as at the end of my um, going through my list of those things that I want to highlight about row covers, I'm going to actually set the camera up over and we're going to put a row cover on one of my beds. Um, it's a bed that has some of those vulnerable crops in. Um, for us, that means Crespedia, better known as Billy Balls, and some of the Amis. Um, they are just more susceptible, and we're actually going to go in and look at some of them first because the Billy Balls have already um, sustained a little bit of damage. So before I jump right in, I'm just happy to see that folks are already commenting with their little sunflower emoji. And what that's all about is if you are a student of any of our online courses, the big ones, the little ones, uh, whichever, any of our courses, when I say any, I mean any of them, um, that means you're a member of the TGW family. And we just love it when you comment with the sunflower emoji to not only let us know that you're here, but it connects you with our other students. So a lot of fun things have grown out of that. And then a lot of people um, actually put a sunflower emoji for each class they've taken. So you can get a gist of um, whether that person is really an avid gardener or maybe even a flower farmer. Um, so hi, Tina, I see you there. All right, so I just want to kind of run down this list of who, what, when, where, why, and how on row covers, right? Um, I want to first say that I really didn't understand the many uses of row covers when I first started farming. And I just assumed they were just for cold protection. But y'all, I'm here to say that it is so many other things or um, situations that row covers are beneficial in, as well as it allows you to manipulate stuff. For me, I have enough row cover to cover my entire garden. When I had an acre and a half of garden, you better believe I had an acre and a half of row cover. Um, not that I necessarily had it all covered at the same time, but it's like peace of mind insurance. Um, so I always had enough row cover to, to cover things in the event that I needed them. So um, first out of the gate, like who should use row cover? Well, really it's available to anybody, whether you're a home gardener or a commercial flower farmer, or you're going from a gardener to a flower farmer. Once you um, maybe hear some of the uses that we use it for, you're gonna realize just how beneficial it can be. Um, so there's a lot of different uses and it is available and open to anybody because Agribon is really available. You know, for many years on our online garden shop, we just sold the 50 foot um, piece of Agribond, but now we also sell the 250 and 500 foot rolls because there are so many people, even avid, we call them sometimes flower garden junkies, people that are like me that led to where I am today that just are, their gardens are getting bigger and bigger, whether they're growing vegetables or flowers or both, right? 
Um, so it's open to anybody. So what is Agrabon? Um, so it's called by a little, lots of different names. Agrabon is actually a brand name, okay? Some people call it Frost Cloth. I tend to call it because the specific one that we use and recommend is the lightest weight Agrabon or floating row cover. And so that's why it's called a floating row cover. That means that it is in fact lightweight enough that you do not have to use hoops with them. However, as I'll mention later, I highly recommend using hoops because it just expands the many uses and more protections um, to your actual plants. So Agrabond comes from Ag19, which is the lightest, which is what we use, up to much higher numbers. Um, and what happens is the Ag19 allows 85% of air, water, and light to penetrate it. So you can really use it year round when you use it properly. Um, since water can penetrate, it means you don't have to take it off when it rains. Light can penetrate it. Um, that's probably the number one reason that I use lightweight on my cool flowers is because I can put it on in the winter and know that those plants are getting the most light that they need as well as water when it rains is actually penetrating that. Um, we do advocate using it with hoops and weights and I'll talk about those um, a little bit further down the line here. Um, so this is actually agricultural fabric that is manufactured to withstand UV rays um, and to allow what I just mentioned, that water can penetrate it um, and air passes through it. But most importantly, um, it'll withstand the sunlight. I cannot tell you how quickly sunlight breaks down stuff. When it sits outside around the clock, um, that's one of the reasons that, so for instance, let's just say those weight bags that we recommend you use, and they're just sandbags, y'all. The sandbags they fill when people are gonna flood, um, <clears throat> and they do have a lifetime on them. I think from memory, it's like 1,600 hours. So the way that we preserve our weight bags um, and to get the most use out of them is when they're not sitting out in the garden in full sun, you know, ready to be used as ours are right now. They're ready for me to put the covers up in the event that we're gonna have a really low temperature night or something, um, is that when they're not in use, which is typically summer, we pile them up and put something else on top of them, whether it's a piece of landscape cloth or a silage tarp or whatever, that just blocks the UV rays. So that really extends the life. Um, and I'll just do a little sidebar here. Um, that is so very true for your um, soil blocking trays, your plug trays. You should only have them out in the sun when they have plants in them and they need to be out there. Um, we see how quickly, you know, all it takes is a new person to start washing our trays and putting them out in the sun and leaving them versus we put them out over in the shade. They still get dry. Um, it just breaks them down, discolors them, and makes them crack a whole lot earlier. So sun is a much, a very, very powerful and needed um, benefit. So when do you use row cover? Really, it can be used anytime. I will say that primarily, I mean, we, I'm just sitting here thinking, I was gonna say, we mostly use it in winter, but that's not really true. I, for vegetable gardeners, there is so much summertime used to prevent pests. Um, so really, it can be used year round. And what I'd like to add to that is, when you use the lightweight row cover, that allows you to use it more often. If you have the heavier row cover that's, you know, there's Ag, I use Ag 19, there's Ag 30, I think there's Ag 45 and Ag 60. I mean, the, it gets heavier and heavier. You would never even consider using any of those um, during the summer months. But I find that lightweight row cover gives me options. So let's just say it's winter, I have the light, and I'll talk, um, in just a minute about the more ways I use it, but let's just say that I wanna protect one of my cool flower plants from some really deeply unusual low temperatures. I just double the lightweight or triple it if that were to be called for. 
So lightweight gives you options. You can always double or triple it if you need it, which doesn't really happen that often for us, but it's an option, but you can't really use heavier weight in spring and summer. So that's one of the reasons um, that I like the lightweight. So you can really use um, row cover anytime or in any season. And so where can you use row cover? Well, obviously, you know, I'm an outdoor farmer. I don't have any hoop or greenhouses. Um, so there are lots of uses for us out here in the garden to use it. But even people that have hoop houses find lots of use um, for row cover because a hoop house, the difference between a hoop house and a greenhouse is a greenhouse typically has heat and ventilate of uh, automated ventilation. A hoop house is just a structure that kind of like blocks the weather from penetrating that. Um, so you can kind of like take your hoop house to a next level by practicing some of these reasons that we use row cover in a hoop house and kind of like bump up your actual uses. So why would you use a row cover? You know, that's the loaded question. So I want to add that I totally never got and I totally underestimated the power of row covers because I thought it was just for cold protection but I will tell you that surely it can be used for that but we rarely use it for that particular reason we are most often using it for pest prevention which I'm going to talk about and for wind protection and you just can't imagine the benefits of blocking your the wind from whooping up on your plants. Um, and we'll do a little bit of a deep dive there here. So I wanna talk about pests first. So for me, um, the classic pest prevention steps that it allows us to, to take is um, in flowers. So when our cool flowers are planted, as you'll see them today, um, and once we finally put our row covers up, once winter really starts, um, you know, it starts behaving like winters where our days are, you know, in the 30s and 40s and night times are going down even colder. Um, it can provide some cold protection, but you see, I only grow cool flowers that are truly winter hardy in my zone. So my cool flowers don't require cold protection, but there are a lot of things they will benefit from. And that number one benefit is um, pest prevention. And the pests for me in winter, the primary ones are squirrels, rabbits, and deer. Um, so putting down our plants and bringing our covers up um, help to keep the deer from walking all over our beds. Because I do use the Bio360 film on all of our transplanted beds, deer walking on our beds, even if they aren't munching down on our plants, still cause a lot of damage. They put hoof prints in our film, which then allows weeds to pop up through them. So I'll do whatever it takes to keep the deer from just basically walking. Oh, sorry y'all, I don't know why my internet just kind of went wonky. Um, so we will um, put the row covers up and that keeps not only the deer, but the golden retriever from walking all over our beds. In addition to that, squirrels and rabbits can really cause a lot of damage, particularly squirrels in the wintertime. Putting your row covers up really, they just don't even really realize what's underneath there. Um, so that's how I would pest control for flowers. There are lots of pest control options for vegetables. For us, we live in the South. Two big pests of a vegetable garden here are bean beetles um, and flea beetles. The bean beetles, um, we like to grow a lot of bush beans because we freeze them and put them up and everybody loves having fresh beans here on the farm. Um, but the bean beetles cause a lot of problems. So we've learned that planting our bean seeds directly in the garden and putting row cover down immediately um, prevents the bean beetle access to the beans once they sprout and start growing. And by denying them access or delaying it much later, we leave the row covers on literally until the beans are full size and starting to bloom. Then we take the row covers off. And at that point, if the bean beetle gets on them, they really don't have enough time to cause a whole lot of damage to our bean product, to our bean 
crop, right? Um, so blocking access, and the same thing is true with flea beetles on eggplant. Eggplant and bee and flea beetles here in the south are like one and together. Um, so eggplant definitely needs to be pollinated. So we would keep our eggplant plants hooped and covered until either the plants grow bigger than our hoops, take it off, um, but that den denies access to the flea beetles and it just really, really delays the damage and prevents the whole problem. And it prevents also the cycling of reproduction. So row cover really provides a protection that way. But here's what we find as flower farmers and flower growers and people that like to do cool season um, plantings is putting up our hoops and covers as soon as the temperatures, for me, the, the key temperature is when nighttime temperatures start going in the mid 20s and the daytimes are in the 30s and 40s is when we put our row covers up because what you don't want to do is encourage your cool season plants to grow too much because under that in those warm cozy conditions underneath there right so we will put the row covers up. So when we plant our cool season plants, as they are planted now, um, then Bobo and Christine's next step is then they put all the hoops and the row covers and the bags out so that the row covers can be put up in the drop of an eye. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm the one that keeps an eye on the weather and to say, oh gosh, we really need to put the row covers up. Putting those row covers up during winter when you add all this up, it equals to really happy winter growing. The black film that is on all of our transplanted beds, that's the Bio360. I did put the link at the head of this Facebook Live, um, the link to the actual row cover page on our website because there's a video on the video tab of that page that you can actually watch. Um, and there's also a video on the Bio360 page of me putting it down by hand that you can actually watch. So when you combine the black side up on the Bio360 for all winter, in addition to the hoops up with the row cover on it, which blocks the cold wind, it makes for some pretty dreaming growing conditions underneath there. Um, and that's why I think I have been so very successful with cool flowers. I mean, we get the earliest blooms, we have the most abundance, the roots just really get that extra push of a little bit more establishing. Um, so that's the part of row covers that I think a lot of people miss. They think they're putting row covers up for cold protection, and for sure that is certainly part of the equation. But it is, I mean, just think about the conditions underneath that row cover with blocking the wind, a sunny afternoon, 85% of that light is penetrating. It just makes for some really, really dreamy conditions. So here is just some tips on how I use them. First and foremost, whenever snow or ice are forecasted, you have got to take your lightweight row covers down. They are not, these tunnels are not made to hold any snow. And if your tunnel collapses on top of your plants, it will suffocate them. Snow and ice are far better insulators and protectors than any row cover could be. And when they fall onto your plants, they kind of encase your plants and protect them. They aren't really hurting your cool season hardy annuals. But if you put a fabric in between the snow and ice and your plants, when it collapses, it's actually gonna suffocate your plants and it's gonna be a squishy, stinky, rotten mess underneath there. Can you tell that I've experienced this firsthand? Um, so if it is cold as heck outside and you're afraid and they're saying that snow is likely coming and ice, take your covers down. Your plants have a better chance of survival facing those elements that are gonna actually help them than your tunnel collapsing. Um, so that for sure, always take the covers down. And then to use the appropriate weights. Um, we do not use any um, to, I do use clips to help. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, we use weight bags to actually hold our row covers down for long-term winter use. 
I've seen spikes and clips that actually clamp on to hoops. Um, I have not found that any of them are effective and many of them actually rip the row cover. But with the wind, we have a really windy site here where I am. Behind me used to be 40 acres of horse pasture right down to the Warwick River. Now there's houses there, but we still get a lot of bottleneck wind that rolls through here. And those types of spikes in the ground or clips onto hoops to hold row cover, we have not found to be effective and in fact destroy the actual um, row cover. So the weight bags that you're gonna see me use are sandbags. Um, and we load them with about 15 pounds of either gravel, sand or soil from your garden. You know, in a small garden space like we have, I don't have soil to spare. If you have a big farm, you know, you can send somebody over with a bunch of bags and have them just dig soil and fill them up. Weigh one, get an idea of how much that is, and then follow suit with the rest of them. Ours are typically filled with gravel because we have access to that. Um, and when you use the appropriate weight and the appropriate number of bags, which basically means we put a weight bag on both sides at the foot of every hoop. The hoops are basically um, installed every 10 to 12 feet, a little closer if um, you have the hoops available. The, the closer the hoops, the more stable your, row co your um, tunnel is. Um, but I have found 10 to 12 feet to be adequate when the fabric is installed properly. And that means a weight bag at the foot of every hoop and then one additional one at the very end because the end would have the two at each feet and then it would have one on the very end to hold the fabric taunt. And as you're gonna see me do when I put it on, um, put it down, that I do the ends first. I prefer, even in windy conditions, to do this job by myself because when you learn that keeping the row cover low to the ground and how to untangle it first before you start installing it, then install both ends, pull it taut, then it's just a matter of walking along and putting the weights down all of one side first and then all of the other side. What you're looking to create is a row cover that is taut um, and the edges, there, there's no flapping of the row cover. Um, and I'm gonna pull the row cover out and then place the bag on it. You should not tuck the row cover up close to the edge of the beds, as I see a lot of people doing. Um, the row cover, the bag for it to use the weight has to have something to sit on, the maximum footage of, of, um, net of row cover to sit on. So um, appropriate weights, enough of them, wires put every eight to 12 feet basically, um, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. And I think I'm gonna actually have to peel my coat off to do this, cause I'm already a little warm. And I see the girls, you're gonna see, I'm gonna turn you around to look at Bobo and Christine weeding. I hope that's what you're looking at. Is that what y'all can see? They're over there doing some um, direct seed weeding. And I'm getting my coat off. All right. So I am going to set you up at the end of the row. Oh, first I wanted to actually show you a couple of things. So we're going to actually do this row. So when this happens to you, this is what helps you to plan for the next year. So this is the bed that we're going to cover. And we're covering this bed because down at the other end, we're going to um, look at the Craspedia and the Ami. Um, both of those are my most vulnerable crop. But there's also another vulnerable crop over there. The point would be that it would be best if all of these had were been planted together, but I did not include that in my plan, so that was a hiccup. Um, and you, this is the kind of stuff that um, helps you to remember this for next year. So, you know, that big calendar I'm talking about all the time, now would be a great time to write on your calendar when you're going to be planting your cool flowers to group together the vulnerable 
plants. Those are plants that can be iffy as to whether they survive my winter, which means they need to be covered earlier, perhaps, for you. Um, so my mistake here, it would be just so convenient if every plant that was vulnerable was in one bed, but they're not. We actually have snaps over here. And I'm going to go ahead and cover this bed for you guys um, just to see how to do it. But in fact, we are going to uncover the snap part of this bed because, as you'll see, they're growing like crazy. And I don't want to do anything to encourage that kind of behavior. So these are snaps that you're looking at right now. And I'm just watching where I'm walking so I don't fall over. So you can see that the bags are already placed throughout the garden. The hoops are up and the row cover is down. But I wanted to show you the Craspedia that's already sustained some damage. See, this should have been um, covered, and I should be on the other side of the bed. Wait a minute, y'all. The sun is just not the greatest for this. So you can see that some of the Craspedia, see the cold damage? They'll come back. They'll be fine. Um, so this is what, you know, kind of stimulated me to say, all right, we have got to put the row covers up. Because on the other hand, I don't want to encourage them to grow too much. And this is the Ami... Um, I think this, oh, well, we've got a name here. This is Ami Select White, and you can see it sustained some damage. And this is the Ami Green Mist, which um, it doesn't look like it sustained damage yet, but I will tell you, it really does. Um, it's not as hardy, I have found, as some of the other Amis. So I am going to set you up back here, and um, I'll going to put the camera as close as it can be to what I'm doing so you guys can see me and we'll see how this goes. So let me put you up. Let me turn you around so you can actually see. There we go. And since I have to work right there, and I'm going to drop you guys way down here. And what you're really going to see is kind of, I'm trying to see what exactly. All right, so I think that's good. So you'll be able to see what my action is here. And I'm actually going to go do the other end first. And you're not going to hear me talking because I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to do what I got to do here. So I'm just going to walk back down and readjust the other end before I start doing the sides.
going down. All right, so let's bring y'all back up. A couple of things that while it's on my mind, I just want to say. First off, notice that I tried to place the majority of the bags with them sitting upright. That just makes it easier for bending over and picking them up next time, right? And just, you know, right now with me standing here, it doesn't feel like it's really breezy, but look how that wind is moving that. Um, that's where I feel like a row cover just really provides. We don't even realize what people need their protection from. Um, we just really don't even realize that it's actually a problem. Um, so, you know, that's what you are really providing protection from. Christine, go help that person. I have no idea who that is. So, sorry, somebody just pulled up here, but we don't know who they are. Um, so let me turn this around so you can actually see what we're talking about here. So I just want you, we'll just, while I'm talking, just sit here and look at all of the wind that is actually moving along and yet we just don't even realize that there is a wind problem at all, right? Um, so it is that use that I think is so very, very beneficial um, that we don't even realize is actually a problem. So I'm gonna walk over here and then I'll look and see if you guys have any questions. So stand by just a minute, let me get out of the sun. It really has turned out to be quite a beautiful day here. Um, wait a minute, sorry, I'm watching what, this is what happens when people, there's just no telling who that person, what that person is asking Christine for. Bobo, I don't know if you need to help her. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um, so let's look back and see what questions we have here. So this is the joy of me going live during the day. Things happen. I was smart enough to put Tucker in the house, or actually he's upstairs in my office. Um, so he's not running loose. Hello, everybody. I used to live in, oh, so people are connecting. That's just so awesome. We just moved here for the winter. My gardens are in Maine. Oh, that's right, Kim, you move, don't you? You're a snowbird. All right, so I'm just looking. Thought I saw a question on here. That's what I'm just scrolling through to look. So things that help me prepare. Diane says, I like to use Agribond as an umbrella for new plugs, prop it up on the bottom edges of it so the, on the hoops so the breeze can go through. Um, I'm glad you said that, Diane, that's a great idea. Um, what I wanted to also say, one of the uses in summer is um, if we wanna create shade, you obviously can't, in ca you can't close it like we just closed it because it would trap the heat also. And that's just too much when it's hot outside. Um, but what I have learned, they call them spring clamps because I know that um, 
because I just bought some new ones yesterday. I actually bought a Christmas present for myself. Bought a bunch of new spring clamps. They are those, they're called spring clamps, but they're like a, a clamp that is really hard to squeeze and it has rub, rubber or plastic um, on the actual teeth. It doesn't have teeth or the surface. And I can actually bring, I can put the road cover down like you just saw and do just like what Diane is talking about. On the side that's not on the um, sun side, I can pin the row cover up and use those clamps to clamp it, gathering up a lot of row cover so you're not likely to actually um, rip it. And that works really, really well. So yeah, you just have to be imaginative all, y'all. I mean, when it's hot outside, if we're doing something with it, we try to make it so it's um, the wind is whipping through it, right? Question, I'm starting my business this spring. I'm so confused. <laughs> you're going to be confused for the rest of your life if you're starting a business. Take it from someone that's been in business for 25 years. <laughs> if you, once you learn this, then there's going to be something else to confuse you. And that is the joy of being a business owner. I mean, if you are, I tell my husband, we talk about this often, that you, we are nothing but fire extinguishers. All we do is put out fires all day long. That's what being a business owner is about, is about facing challenges, figuring out how to overcome them, and that's what allows you to be a business owner. So let's see, what are your confused? Do you compost and mulch your pathways in the fall or plant cover crop? I don't have anything planted yet. Well, first off, all different subjects that you're talking about, um, we... The part of my garden that we just looked at, which is was planted this fall, the pathways are mulched with leaves. The beds um, got organic fertilizer. Sometimes they get compost, sometimes they don't. It just depends. Sometimes they get cover cropped. Um, I would highly recommend, Kelly, um, my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, which is really about a three season cutting garden. And it really talks about, first off, it why it's called Vegetables Love Flowers, y'all, is because we were trying to get the message to vegetable people how flowers are the ticket to organic gardening um, for all of the pest control and the benefits, right? So the book tells a little bit at the front about why flowers benefit vegetables, but the rest of the book is about growing a three season cutting garden from prepping, tending, how I garden organically, how we make leaf mulch, I mean leaf mold, um, and all of that information. So, and it even has diagrams in the back of the book that actually show you how beds warp through seasons, like what would be in those beds. You know, spring flowers, summer flowers, cover crop, whatever. Um, so would recommend and would love to sign one to you, Kelly, if you get it from us. But of course, it's available in bookstores everywhere. It's so odd to see you in short sleeves. It's 16 here this morning in Washington State with a foot of snow. And you know, Linda, isn't that true? Well, first off, I'm putting my coat back on because now that I'm in the shade, I'm a little chilly. Um, I mean, this is classic Virginia, is that when we wake up in the morning, it's like you get to wear all your wardrobes on any day this time of year in Virginia. Typically, when January rolls around, we finally get some winter. Um, used to be this happened in mid-November, but now we have cold nights and cold mornings. And then when the sun comes out, I think it's actually like 49 degrees here or something. <clears throat> but when you're working and you're out in the sun, it gets really hot really fast. 8B South Georgia, Cary. Got all my cool flowers in and they're growing like crazy. We're expecting another weekend in the 80s. Boo hiss. We rarely get in the 20s or anything past 25. Any suggestions on what I can do to protect them from when temps do drop that low? I would just leave them. Um, so <clears throat> the reason that plants have a winter hardiness zone rating is that they normally will survive all the temperatures in that zone. So you being in 8B, particularly, I'm 8A, 7B. I'm right on the cusp of both of those. Um, typically, I would say you don't really have to use row cover for cold protection, but the other part of that is wind protection, as I just mentioned, you know, kind of explained, we don't really use row covers for cold protection. It's all the other benefits, but you may not have enough window of time to actually use them for that, right? Um, 
So just having some Agrabon in your available to protect those plants that you feel may be vulnerable when the temperatures do go that low is be the only thing I would suggest to you. No hell, it's always helpful to see how people work. It is so true. Bonnie, did, did you put the bags up against the hoops? So that's a good question. So it wasn't so much up against hoops, because you know how the bottoms of stuff, just like a bag of sugar or anything else, it finds its own little level spot. I like it when the bags sit down and lean towards the hoops because that keeps them more upright. So when, cause see, I'm the one that spends all winter uncovering and covering these rows up, right? So when I don't have to bend all the way down to grab a bag, that is huge because I mean, this little garden is nothing. When we had 40, 120 foot long cool flower gar beds, you soon learn all these little things that you can do when you're setting stuff up that makes it easier when you have to do other steps to them, right? Um, so that's what I was doing is just rearranging it so they lean in, but that's more so to keep the bag upright. How do you use the row cover in the middle of summer? So <clears throat> Bobo and I have tried several things. First off, when we plant several warm season vegetable crops, squash and beans. I forgot to mention squash earlier. If you fight the squash bug, the whole secret is to plant your squash, middle of summer, right? Cover it um, and then keep it covered until the squash is literally pushing the cover off. At that point, when you uncover it, if the squash bug gets on it, again, does not have enough time to cause enough damage. Um, we literally have little squash bug issues here now. I guess they all packed their bags and moved away because we do cover our squash in the summer, um, as well as our bush beans and our flea beetles. But in the flower garden, <clears throat> we have been known for those plants that need, like for instance, we're planting in the summer transplants while we are planting onto white film, we use the white side up in the heat of summer, they still may need a little bit more hardening off to the wind and the conditions. So we would use the hoops and the row cover in the way that I just mentioned and Diane was talking about. You put the hoops and the row cover down, you hike up one side, the side that's not facing the sun. So there's total ventilation and we use those um, clips, spring clips to hold um, the row cover up. And it typically, if you're careful and you're bunching a bunch of row cover up, it does not rip them. So um, again, I don't nearly use them as much in the summer, but when you need them, you definitely need them. Nancy, when you put the bags down to hold the fabric, do you place them at the base of a hoop or in between hoops? Yes, good question, Nancy. They're always at the foot of, of a hoop. That's where the strongest spot is. And so what you're really aiming to do is if, if wind can get under your row cover, that's when it lifts it off. Um, I mean, we've had row cover. <clears throat> Every time I talk about this, I think about that I need to dig this video out. I have a video of our row covers down during ravaging winds and they stay. Um, and there was one that didn't stay and it was a flapper. Um, so doing as I did, do one end and then go do the other end, pull it taunt. Then you normally have to go back and kind of readjust the first end you did. What you're looking for is it to be even, you know, both sides to have the same amount of fabric and that it's pulled taunt. And then I go down and put the bags. Um, and again, you know, I used to be that Agribond actually had a row right down the middle, the full length of the Agrabon was a green stri racing stripe. And that was so helpful in place in the row cover. Well, they don't do that anymore, particularly during the pandemic. I mean, we were lucky to get it for a lot of times. Um, and so when you, if you have the racing stripe, you just put that right on the top of your hoops. Um, but if you don't, you just kind of have to eyeball where it goes and that, that gets easier as you do it more. Um, make sure the fabric's in the middle, pull it taut, and then go down and do one side and then the other side. 
do any, Sherry asked, do any cool flower seedlings go into an open bed or do they all go into Bio 360? That is a great question. Um, all transplants go into Bio 360 because of the weed suppression, y'all. Um, last week, the girls, we whole weeded. And if you could have seen how many little hen bits and chickweeds were germinating in that small hole that had a plant planted in it because wherever light can get, they germinate. And um, it just is fascinating how that works. But to think that you can prevent weed seeds on the surface from sprouting wherever the Bio360 is, it becomes a no-brainer. Only our direct seeded beds have no film on them. And then I hoe them. So Cree, um, the, that is Agrabon lightweight row cover and I put a link directly to the product on the head of this. I had the best intentions to do my first cool flower garden this year, but due to illness, I missed the window. It's okay to do my seed starting. Do I have time to do the cool season flowers in zone 7B? Would love your thoughts. So there's two windows of opportunity that are best for cool flowers. There's fall planting for those people that are in a winter hardiness zone that allows fall planting. But the second window is what is called very early spring. And um, Crystal, I would recommend, if you haven't read my book, Cool Flowers, that talks about that. And then I did this z series of videos called the, um, the Cool Season Flower Chronicles. And it's five videos addressing the most common questions I get about cool flowers, and that is one of them. And it walks you through exactly what and when to do it. And you can find that link in my profile, um, or you can go to our website, it's on my blog. But that will really, really help you. And yes, you can still do it. And you would get busy starting seeds immediately after the holidays. Um, so friends, I'm gonna wrap it up now. We are at the end of, um, I got all my questions answered. And thanks so much for joining me. And just remember, it's best to ask a question um, than to not do it at all. There is no dumb question. We love it. Um, when you ask your questions and I see that Sherry just asks, what are the cool flowers flash crops? Sherry, that varies from region to region. What's a flash crop for me is not a flash crop for you, depending on where you live. Um, flash crops are those crops that don't really branch and rebloom. Um, but for me here in the South, Agrostema, Bells of Ireland and Nigella, there are others, but I can't think of them right now. Um, they just, the heat takes them out before they actually can do, did I say Bells of Ireland? Um, but most of the others will rebloom. <coughs> I'm sorry, all these leaves make me lose my voice. Um, so thank you guys and until we meet again, friends. And remember, I put the link to where you can watch the video or you can just watch this over again. What helps me the most is for you to like and share this broadcast, y'all. And um, see you again next week, Thursdays, 11 a.m., live from the farm. Ciao.